On this episode of Strength Coach Tutorials, I'm going to show you how to make this dynamic dashboard based on force plate testing results. Some features of this dashboard are the slicer on the left hand side that is going to allow me to select any athlete and as I select them the chart automatically updates. These charts are all dynamic in that they will automatically update to whatever athlete you select as well as I can collapse the data down into different time frames so I can look at it by years, by months, or by days. And this is going to be really useful for displaying your information or take, keeping track of any of your testing results. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back. And if you will remember from Strength Coach Tutorials number 73, that would be the last video that I did, we put this chart together and this um, little dashboard using this slicer here where we could select any of the athletes. And then because this is hooked up to a pivot table, we were actually able to expand or contract these graphs using these plus and minus arrows down here in the bottom left or a bottom right hand corner. So this chart is already dynamic, but in order to make it look more like the one from the intro video, I'm going to need to add another series to this chart. So I'm going to go back to my pivot table. And if you'll remember the pivot table is here and we can expand this by date or we can expand it by year or kind of whatever we want to look at here and the chart is automatically dynamic and attached to that. And then I also have a copy of the slicer here so that we can make sure that that works as well. To remind you, this pivot table, the name of it was Video Pivot and we're gonna continue to name our different pivot tables based on that. So what I wanna do here is actually add another series to this. So right now we have our jump height and if I click anywhere inside my pivot table and right click and go to show field list, it's going to pull open this chart on the right hand side and I'm going to add another series in here. I'm going to choose RSI and if I drag that I'm going to drop it down in my values and right now it is showing me the sum of the RSI and that's not a very useful number for me. So I'm going to change this to be the average. So what I do is down here in the right hand corner where it says sum of uh, RSI, I'm going to click there, go to value field settings. And I'm going to just change that to an average and hit OK. And now it's going to show me an average of that value. So that's how we put an extra series on there. And then I know I'm going to color these um, in different colors. So one of the tricks I like to use on my, on my actual pivot table is I'll take the header columns here. And I know I'm going to make max jump height um, blue. And I'm going to color that column blue. And then I know I'm going to make RSI red, so I'll color that column red so that they interact with the graph. Now, the cool thing about pivot tables is because we've added the series here, when we go back to our dashboard, that copy of the graph is already updated to look like the pivot table, or sorry, to look like the, or to include the series from the pivot table. So everything is dynamic, and as we add stuff to our pivot table, it will automatically show on this graph as well. So what I want to do here is make it look a little bit more like the graph I had in the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the format a little bit. So this is a line graph currently. If I go to design, it's going to give me a bunch of different options here. And sort of as I hover over them, it should change the graph that I'm looking at. So you can see as I hover over these, it gives me kind of different variations on the actual chart. And then if I go to quick layout, there's also some options here. And I'm just looking for one in particular. No, nope, not really able to find it today. So I'm gonna pick one and we're gonna kind of edit it a little bit to make it look a little bit more like the chart that we want. Let's go with style two. And you can see what this has done. It's just added some bars around our dates at the bottom and just cleaned everything up a little bit. So what I want to do now is edit my different series. So my RSI, I'm going to click there and right click on it and I'm going to format this series. So it's going to pull open a box on the left hand side or the right hand side. It's going to give me some options here. So in terms of the color, I'm going to make the line, I'm going to make it red. You can see now it's made it all red and I'm going to give it sort of a double line because I like the way that that looks. Maybe make it a little bit thicker so that we can see it. 
and then we'll go to 275 and then that looks good and then we'll change the marker around a little bit we'll make that red as well and the options for it we will make it a red ball built in maybe just make that a tiny bit bigger as well so now we have this double line um, graph here and I think that looks pretty good and then the second thing we'll do is we'll take this series here and if I right click and go to change series chart type what I can do is I'm going to actually change this one to um, maybe a bar chart and then put that on a secondary axis so when I hit OK what you're going to notice is now I have sort of a bar and it's on a secondary axis and that's going to correspond to my actual jump height and I'm just going to change the way this looks a little bit too so I've selected the data series go over to my paint can and for the fill I'll give it a solid fill of sort of like um, a light blue color and then I'm going to turn the transparency up to about 50 percent and that just gives it this like floating in the background kind of look and I'm going to take the border off so there's nothing kind of going around it so that's our first graph and then just to make things look a little nicer I'll just take this part here and delete it so it gives me a little bit more room and like I said before this graph still fully dynamic we can expand it or contract it based on the athlete that we're looking at and we can see what it looks like for different athletes so that's going to be pivot chart number one and then a quick tip when you're moving graphs if I click on the graph and hold down the alt key as I drag it around it's going to automatically snap to the cells so it just helps me line things up a little bit and make things sort of cell width and when I'm creating dashboards that's sort of a useful feature to make sure that everything lines up with each other so I'm just going to shrink this down one because I know I'm going to put another chart above it so let's do our second chart and to do that what I'm going to do is go back to my data and I have a chart or a table here that has all of my force plate testing values in it I'm going to click anywhere in this table and go to table design and then summarize with pivot table and this time I know where I want to put it so I'm going to select existing worksheet and I'm going to pick the position I'm going to go to my video pivot um, sheet and then I'm going to pick a spot in this sheet so the spot that I want is actually behind this stupid chart so I'm going to exit out of this for one sec and move this chart out of the way I'll be back I'll do this for one sec so I'll move this chart out of the way I'm actually going to delete it because I don't really need that chart anymore so I'll go back to my data table design summarize with pivot table existing worksheet and then select where I want it to go and I like to put it just sort of one over from the pivot table from before and I'll hit OK and I'm going to click anywhere inside this pivot chart go to pivot table analyze and I'm going to name this video pivot 2 so this chart is now called video pivot 2 and inside this chart I'm going to just add a couple of values number one being the date so I'm going to add that in there and now I got the same sort of date that I had in my last one and then let's pick some metrics for this one maybe peak velocity and I'll put that in my values and maybe I want sort of the average of peak velocity for that day so if I right click there go down to average and hit OK now we have the average value and maybe I'll also put RSI on this one as well and I'll take the average of RSI so I can see what it looks like versus the peak velocity so I'll go value field settings and then average of RSI and then from here let's now make another chart so what I'll do I'll select anywhere in this pivot table and I will go to insert and then recommended charts and I'm going to pick a line chart because I like the way that the line charts look and hit OK so you can see it automatically makes that line chart for us and as we expand things we get the same kind of effect that we had before but what you can see right now is it's giving us the actual values for all of the line chart or sorry for all of the athletes instead of just one athlete so what we need to do is actually link this slicer to the chart so how this is going to work is if I right click on this slicer I can go down to what's called report connections and then what I want to select is um, where is it oh I didn't the name didn't go through so let me rename this 
I'm going to name this video pivot two and hit OK. And then so I'll go back to the slicer here and I'll right click report connections. I'll pick video pivot two and hit OK. And now what you're going to notice is as I select a different athlete, it's going to show their values instead. OK, so now this chart works perfectly. I'm going to control C and then paste that chart actually on this sheet where our dashboard is. I'll hold alt and kind of drag that to be the same size as the other one. Maybe make it a bit smaller here. I just got to play around with the sizes here to make everything fit. And then I'll delete this one here. And that looks pretty good to me. And as I select different athletes, because these are all off of the same sort of slicer, it should automatically update. And one cool trick with these charts is I can control C the chart below and then go up top, right click. And as I paste it, what it actually pastes is the formatting, which is kind of neat. So it doesn't change any of the values. It just pastes the formatting. So that's a quick way for me to get the charts to look the same. And one trick that I could do and I did in the intro is if I just select this series, and format it and then instead of blue maybe I make it red and I'll bring the transparency up a little bit because red's a little bit more of a overpowering color and then the lines up here in the markers instead of red they become blue and I'll make the marker blue as well now we kind of have an inverse of the one below it and it kind of give it kind of keeps the same um, color scheme, but it looks pretty good. So maybe I'll take the transparency down just a little bit. So now we have these two charts. We have the average of the RSI and the average of peak velocity and the max jump height. And you can see now pretty quick and easily, we've been able to start to put together a little dashboard. And then I got one more chart that I'm going to put down the, the one side here. So I'll go back to my data and table design, create a new pivot table and I'll select a location, my video pivot, and I'm gonna put it right in this cell here and hit okay. I'll get this chart out of the way. Actually, I'll just delete that. I don't really need it. And for this one now, I'm gonna put a few different values in it. So let's put jump height in there. And I'll put that under values. And then under my rows, I wanna put athlete name. So just name under rows and date. Now, like we did before, we're going to name this one. So pivot table analyze, we're going to call this video pivot three. I'm going to make it all one word. Sorry. Hit okay. And I'm going to link the slicer to it. So right click report connection, select video pivot three. Hit okay. And now as I select an athlete, because I put the athlete under the rows, it's going to only show me their jump height values. But in this case, what I want to do is instead of sum of jump height, I'm going to go down to my value, value field settings. I'll go max, but I'll go over to show value as, and I want to show as a percent of the column total and hit OK. So if we look now, what this is going to show me is on the 13th of January, this athlete had their highest recorded jump. So it's 100% of their, their recorded jump. That, that is their max. And then January 10th was 86% of whatever this max was. Um, February was an average of what of 98% of whatever this max was. But if I open it up, you can see the different dates that are involved in that. Okay, so it gives me an idea of where this athlete was actually performing their best. So I'm gonna select this chart and go to insert recommended charts. And for this one, I'm going to select a sideways bar graph, hit OK. And I'll just clean this one up a little bit. I'll delete the total, delete the total over here. I don't really need any of these. So what I can do for all of these slicer or these um, filters, I can right click and hide them and then they go away. Spread this out a little bit. And I'm going to play around with the values at the bottom. So I'll right click here, format axis. And I know that the max is only ever going to be 100 just based on the way that I've set this up. 
I'm probably never gonna have a mini minimum lower than 30%, so I'll make that 30, and then I'll make my major units maybe 0.25. No, it's too big. Let's say 0.15. No, that doesn't work either. Let's go 0.1. So now, now you can see, one sec, let me do that one more time. Yeah, point 0.1, reset. So you can see it takes me all the way to 100. Let's make this chart piece a little bit bigger so that it fits. And I'll just change these to be a similar color to the other graph that we have. So if I select the series and go to the paint can to make sure I select the whole series, we'll make these that blue color fill them but I'll also make them about a 50% say 55% transparency and take the line off of them so now we have this chart as well and you can see we can expand this or contract it and show where the athlete was sort of jumping their best so I'm gonna control C copy this chart go back to my actual dashboard here and paste that in and I'll stick this at the side Holding down the Alt key, I can drag it to be the same size as the other charts. Then I'll close this off. I'm just gonna play around with the sizes a little bit here to make everything sort of fit. So there you go. Pretty quickly and easily we have created this dashboard and it is fully dynamic and we can shrink our graphs one by one we want to look at different time frames and see how our athletes are performing and select different athletes okay so that's how to make a quick and easy sort of dashboard now a couple things just to clean this up a little bit one thing I could do is if I go to my slicer I can change the color of it so maybe I want this gray color and then these charts if I right click um, and format chart area what I can do is go to no fill and then I can take the actual graph part and go no fill there. Maybe no border, no border. So it makes the graph completely transparent and I'll do the same thing over here. I'll do it for all of them. No fill, no line, no, no line, no fill. Oh, I didn't get everything on this one for some reason. No fill. There we go. So now everything is completely transparent. And if I take all of the cells and kind of go behind them, maybe I make the whole thing sort of a gray color. And because I chose gray for my slicer, it actually kind of fits in there really nicely. And now these graphs all sort of sit right on this and they all sort of look the same and you can't really tell where one starts and the other one ends. And now you have this nice looking sort of dashboard. And then one more thing we could do, if I go to view, I can turn off headings, grid lines, and the formula bar. And then I could double click sort of up in the home area and make that part smaller. And now we basically have this dashboard that we can play around with to look at the different values. It's fully interactive so that we can sort of look at whatever we want. And it's just a really good way to start to look at some of the key metrics from the data that you are collecting. So that's the end. I hope this video helps you out. And if it did, I would really appreciate it if you could please like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps me out. And if you could share this on social media, that would help the channel grow and help me get this information out to more coaches to help them make better decisions and better sheets to make their job easier. So with that, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.